Welcome to Limitless, the show that gives you love and inspiration on a Saturday morning. And today we have nothing less than the best. We have Lou Fellingham, who is going to be on the show. She'll be joining us very, very shortly. And of course, we know that she's a musician, songwriter and a singer. She's dynamic as a music minister. We'll be listening to her and tell us about her life and just giving us loads of nuggets of inspiration very, very soon. But first, let me remind you of her beautiful sound and her anointed ministry. Let's sit back and relax and listen to Lou Fellingham as she takes us through a wonderful journey in Our God is For Us. Enjoy.
Whoa, our God is for us. What a wonderful ministration. Let's make welcome to Lou Fellingham. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the show. How are you doing? Yes, thank you. I am doing very well. I'm still waking up, Marie. You're nice and bright and alert and happy and I'm still a little... Oh, but um, I am very well this morning. Thank you. Oh, uh, lovely. You look absolutely lovely today. Okay, so... <laughs> I know quite a bit about you um, from like researching and obviously having you on the show before, we learned so much about you back then and so glad that you can join us again today. Now, um, you know, you've been in the industry for many, many years and we have people that have been asking about, you know, like quite eager to see you on the show because they know they can get so much information from you. Please tell us, where did all of this beautiful music and inspiration and songwriting and where did it all start? That is a very good question. I mean, how far do you want to go back, Maria? That's the question. <laughs> right, uh, I think I, I mean, I've always, as a child, grown up singing. And yeah. uh, I actually grew up in like a quite traditional Baptist, evangelical church kind of thing. Yeah. And um, you used to sing at the front every year and receive your reward for um, how many times you attended Sunday school. So if you'd attended a lot of times, you'd get a really big prize. And if you've been there a few <laughs> weeks, you might get a smaller one. I'm not sure if I quite agree with the um, context now, but as a child, that's what we did. And yeah. uh, so I had opportunity to sing. I started learning harmony when I was seven. Um, and it's always been my passion for as long as I can remember to sing and tell people about Jesus. I was passionate about Jesus and I love to sing. And so um, I used to walk around with demo tapes. I joined choirs and bands and um, all sorts of different things. Anything I could jump into, I would do. Um, and that passion, was really where it started. A passion for Jesus started very, very young. Yes. And it, it it parallel with your music passion as well. Yeah. Your, music, your passion for music and your passion for, for Christ all yeah. started very young. Yeah. I wonder if those gifts actually did work then. What, 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 you know, what the, the you gift you got for attending church. I'm wondering if that uh, was actually something that maybe, really did work. Maybe. I think the thing is, my, uh, my mum and dad didn't come from a Christian home or Christian family. And yeah. uh, they got married very young, moved to Australia. Um, yeah. When it was a thing called a ten pound pom, you could move yeah. to another country, and and my dad got a job straight away, and and then they both became Christians out in Australia, yeah. and they used to um, uh, send cassette tapes because I'm ancient uh, back to my grandparents of me just making noises around the house. I would sing around the house even when I was like one or two years old, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously not necessarily about Jesus, but I was singing all the time, and so that's that's what they would send back to my grandparents. And then I became a Christian when I was five. I remember clearly giving my life to Jesus um, and got baptized when I was six. And then the journey kind of unfolded through that time. Now, I'm not saying I stayed perfect. <laughs> I've still got a lot to work on. Um, but my heart for Jesus, um, yeah, was just, I think, birthed when I was very young. And my mum and dad, mm -hmm. you know, used to spend a lot of time investing about the gospel, reading the Bible, praying with us. Um, and that bears fruit, doesn't it? So, um, yeah, so I feel really blessed. I met a lady the other day, um, Minu, uh, sorry, yeah, Minu, her name is. And um, she, I met her when I was 15 in a, I don't know, some sort of youth camp in yeah. Canterbury. And yeah. I remember that was my real first encounter with the Holy Spirit. That's what I remember from it. And yeah. she remembers this girl coming up and going, can I sing on the stage, please? <laughs> and, she, and she didn't know me. I was yeah. just like, I want to sing. I have no yeah. avenues in. I've not got like a big platform. I've not got anyone that knows me, but this is what I believe I'm called to do. So I'm just going to yeah. keep handing out demo tapes and pushing as many doors as I could. Now yeah. I would be really embarrassed to do that. <laughs> well, you know, it's small beginnings, isn't it? And we thank God for the small. We don't despise it because I think it's it's... It's amazing how much truth is, is found when you when you look back into how you start off. Yeah. There's a lot of the rawness of what God has deposited in your life. But you know yeah. what I found quite interesting in what you said just now, where you know, with the cassette tapes being, you know, recording you singing at home, irrespective of what you were singing about. <laughs> yeah. um, and a lot of what you said about the sound and and just wanting to, I think musicians have 
there's something in them that they want to express, isn't it? Did you ever feel yes. that it was just you didn't know what it was, but you knew there was something that you just yeah. wanted? You don't just open your mouth and sing for nothing, even if no. you think you are. There's always something, isn't there? Yeah, I think um, as somebody who, it's like it's a, it's a part of who I am and yeah. that can't be taken, whether it's on a platform or not. Yeah. So I'm one of those annoying people who sings around the house all the time. And uh, and actually the only time I lost my song, I think, was when my mum died and I groaned for a few weeks and then the song mm. returned. Um, but the song was, um, yeah, it's just part of who you are. Um, mm. And it's definitely, and yeah it's definitely an overflow of what's going on inside it's like when you hear music that does something in your soul yeah. sometimes where you're like oh i just need to write or i just need to sing or yeah. i just you you know you feel it deeply yeah. Um, yeah. and so i've had the privilege really honestly i've got it's all god it's all god yeah. opening doors and um just giving opportunity, hearing tiny prayers that might even be thought prayers that I didn't spend hours on my knees always asking yeah. God for opportunity. And he just has opened the door and allowed me to walk through it. Um, so yeah. I feel really blessed to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I love it. I love what you're saying here. I'm wondering whether I'm even up to beginning to believe that perhaps everybody has that innate Thing in them where they need to express, whether it's music, whether it's arts, whether it's um, to speak, whether it's to write, but there's something in everyone. And it's it's this groaning inside where mm. you've got to let it out in, and you've got to yeah. express it in some way. And I love it because you're a prime example of that. You're really showing that actually um, God has God had deposited something so special in you. And, and as, as a result, look, we've got so many albums, so many songs, so much inspiration, so, I mean, so much blessing. So many wrinkles. I've got the light right, so we're okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think we're all made to, to do something. And, um, you know, obviously, even in this season, um, for as a creative, it's it's challenging because really, um, I, you know, you can feel a lot of creative people feeling like there there's no value uh, yeah. in who they are and what they do because obviously a lot of uh, the government, a lot of different things have been thrust towards education and the way the society can um, keep businesses going, all of which is valuable. I'm not saying yeah. that isn't valuable, but actually the, I know that many creatives are, you know, struggling to make ends meet, struggling yeah. to know how to continue and to continue being creative when it feels like yeah. there's not opportunity, there's not an outlet. Um, yeah. And it, and that's the challenge, isn't it? Especially if it is part of who you are. You know, yeah. how do you how do you get that overflow out if there's no, you know, nowhere to release the song, nowhere yeah. to release the writing, nowhere to release creativity. Yeah. Um, and so I think it is a challenge. But you know, if you are a creative, actually that can't be taken from you, even if yeah. platforms, even if opportunities are not open at the moment. Yeah. Still keep the juices flowing. Still keep ways of you know pouring that overflow out it, and uh, then you're keep, kind of keeping the muscles going because I don't know about you yeah. but sometimes I'm going to start doing some songwriting with some friends soon because I haven't really done much songwriting in this last season it's been just too hard to fit that in with everything else yeah and uh, I'm, I'm messaging my friend going I'm really really weak at this at the moment you know I, I can't I my muscles are <laughs> are tired you know tired they're a bit flabby yeah. when it comes to songwriting and so we've just got to keep these muscles um strong yeah you know yeah. In, in any way that we can yeah. um and yeah. trust god and trust god yes most definitely there, there's so many changes aren't there that yeah. society is changing as we know you know they talk about the new normal and who was it that said this i think it was anthony delaney that said um we've got to get back to the what and then the how will come later yeah. so knowing what we are what mm -hmm. are you who mm -hmm. are we yeah. And then how we express that will develop as as the systems change. We will then be able to flow with the systems yeah, once we can out. identify what we are as, mm. as creative beings, because obviously we're made by a creator in his image. So we yeah. are create. And if the system changes, we change with it as well. And our how changes, but our what remains the same. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I think um, learning how to adapt and learning how to, kind of use your what in different ways is something yeah. that we've had to do this last 
um, season. And yeah. um, fortunately, because I have got a little bit of a platform, I've got yeah. something that I can build on. So I understand that it's slightly easier for me on one level. But we yeah. were about to launch a series of women's conferences. I'd done my first one. Uh, we've got gigs and loads of stuff booked in. Everything was cancelled. This launch that we've been working for months towards of, of this new outlet, this new venture, all yeah. gone. And uh, and so it's like, but but that doesn't really change who I am and the fact that yeah. I love to minister and I want to pour out song and I want to yeah. lead people. And so we've had to take that what and yeah. apply it in the circumstances that we're in now. Yeah. Now it's you know it's obviously not the same as being able to physically you know see people and engage with people in the same way, but actually. Yeah. God's been really kind uh, to let us still be able to allow that what out into a different platform. So, yeah. yeah, it's it's a challenge. And I just want to encourage people who are creative, who are feeling like, where where can I release my voice? Where can I release my uh, art, my writing? Yeah. Just to keep um, just to keep practicing, just to keep pouring it out and and trust God that the doors and the opportunities will open. Yes. Keep your eyes open and don't just sit back and wait. Yeah. You know, we have to be active, yeah. but uh, it's not about that. Actually, it's about trusting God in that activity yeah. and letting him lead us. Yeah. So I remember with what we were doing, I actually didn't do anything for the first two or three months. So I didn't really do much online at all because, you know, Nath was studying, the kids were at home, homeschooling. We were trying to uh, learn how to live in that context. Mm. You know, it was like, I haven't, I can't do anything else right now. And then there was a moment where we went, ah, oh, it's time now. It's time. Yeah. Um, so your time will come. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just want to encourage yeah. people with that. Oh, such wise words. It's true. Yeah. Everybody has their time. Because there's a time and a season. And, you know, it's like King Solomon wrote, there's a time and season. And when God created, he also created the time. And if we trust in him, everything falls into place in the fullness yeah. of, that, of that time. And, and it's it? learning how in yeah. that trusting moment, you know, again, I don't want to be, well, it'll be fine. Everything's OK. Come on, you can do it. It's like, actually, there's sorrow, there's loss, yeah. there's grief, there's pain. Um, yeah. And all of that is real, and so it's okay yeah. to admit that too. This actually really yeah. hurts. Yeah. Um, I do feel like I've lost a lot, mm -hmm. and that is that is true. But actually, again, bringing that to Jesus, bringing that to Him, is yeah. really important in this season to keep trusting Him with that sorrow, keep trusting Him with that pain, and That's trusting right. that He will that that sorrow will turn you know into into joy at some point. Yeah. Again. Most definitely, most definitely. You know, um, I like, I, I think it's interesting that you talked about, you know, it could hurt sometimes, there's different situations, because actually, even in that, the God God uses our broken state, doesn't he? Mm. It's that there's yeah. a process of breaking, dying to what you want to do, what you can't do at the time. Mm. And in that humbleness and that broken state of not being able to do what you want to do, when you want to do, how you want to do it, when you, you know, that kind of thing, what you dreamt and envisaged, yeah. you're, you're breaking and surrendering. And, and that can open up a new sort of manifestation of, of God. You can actually yeah. be able to get deeper in him, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, it's just quite amazing. Yeah. But you said something just now. You spoke about this women's conference. I, I, I like the fact that you've touched on that, the, the fact you had a women's conference. I can see now you're an ambassador for women. Nice one. Come on, and also girls. The, <laughs> yes. Um, and then you mentioned about your children as well. Now, as a woman, as a minister, as a role model, yeah. there are going to be women out there who um, have callings. You know, we all have a calling in different areas. Mm -hmm. And then they've got children and they're mothers. And I know you've managed to do this successfully, manage being a wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, don't, you don't know what it looks like back here. <laughs> Tell us. Tell us how have you done this? Because all we see is victory. We see success. That's what oh. we see. We see a limitless God operating in your life in such a magnificent way. So tell us how you've been able to do this. Uh, okay. Well, I think firstly, it's the grace of God. Um, mm -hmm. which might sound really coy. I'm not just throwing that out there. It really is God's mm -hmm. grace. Mm -hmm. I do, I feel even still to be allowed to to sing, to be able to allowed to minister, yeah. you know, if it, it feels like it's God's grace uh, on my life. So it's not me. Although um, we did, we've done a lot of practical things. I think when, 
when my kids were really small, I just took them everywhere. We made it work. I would take a travel cot. So if I was um, doing an event, I would basically be feeding at seven o'clock, quickly hand it over to grandma or whoever was with me to help that they would put the baby down and I'd be on stage within five minutes and you have to change your hat completely. And so, you know, it's hard work. It is, it is just hard work. Um, but I was I was not going to you know stop what we were doing, particularly when the kids were young, because we were still part of a band. So I was the lead singer of a band. So you can't yeah. just go see you later, guys. Uh, can't do it for three years. Um, and so I put things into place where I had key people who loved my children, either traveling with us or at home with them. I would take them with me as much as I possibly could. And that really shifted a bit when they started school. Because yeah. obviously you can't take them on a Friday places because they're at school. Yeah. Um, but still within the context of that, um, I try and take them as much as possible. And yeah. that is hard work, having your kids on, on the road. It's much easier without them. <laughs> but actually, uh, you teach them about, you know, cultures and how to relate to different people and different expressions of worship and all these exciting things. So it's actually a real joy for me to take them yeah. because that I get to expose them to so many different um, things of the kingdom of God, which is really fun, yeah. um, and um, and I just I, a practical thing for me is opening your home when you're not on stage. So uh, we had key families, key friends that became part of our family throughout the week, mm -hmm. and so creating community is really important. And so as a community, people would then help me because mm -hmm. I would feed them, they would help me. I would have. I would have a home that they were loved in and welcomed in yeah. and then uh, they would look after my kids when I wasn't there and stuff like that I think is really important so you don't feel like it's a complete just kind of transaction or exchange well you do this I do that actually yeah. it's it's more about building community around you um, and yeah. so that, that the kids know that they're loved and yeah. and the people you you're leaving with you know they're loved like there are definitely a, you know quite a few friends and grandma and grandpa who used to help out a lot um who i know i wouldn't have to worry about my children at all at that point i could leave yeah. them for a weekend and it would be fine yeah. um so yeah things like that are quite helpful prayer talking to the children as they get bigger is really important communicating with them how are you doing how are you feeling yeah. do you yeah. feel like you're being left too much are you missing us you know communication is key and yeah. making them feel part of what you're doing as well. I remember Beth Revan once saying, hearing her say, you know, making the children feel like they're, you know, the, the mission is theirs as well. It's not just mum and dad going doing something, but actually yeah. as a family, uh, this is our mission. Yeah. And so I, I've definitely tried to implement that thought process into what we're doing as a family. This is what we're doing as a family. And now they're getting bigger, I can share stories of that people are saying about songs or moments and my son is doing words for us while we're doing this online thing i've got a 16 year old son and so he's now helping us with some of the words and get making sure they're up when we're online and that sort of thing and and the other day he came to a, a concert that we haven't done for months we did it online and he was just like wow i didn't it, that was amazing i didn't realize the songs mm -hmm. and some of the older stuff that i've never heard before and you know you're depositing all the time yeah. um and it just it you just have to be prepared to, to work hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's well, not easy. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's something that you want to do, uh, you mm. make it work and you pray for provision of people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so those the, are the key yeah. things. That's the thing, because children are unpredictable as well, when especially when they're yeah. very young. So you really yeah. do need the grace of God. Yeah. You need to literally trust in him and then each day and each um, surprise <laughs> yeah. that um, comes your way, it, then oh, that's yeah. what you have to walk with God, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but it's fun, man. You, you, it's like you, you're you giving them an, an experience that they yeah. wouldn't otherwise get in other circumstances. And, yeah. you know, you can have these things, oh, preacher's kid, oh, worship leader's kid, they have to get to church. I mean, yeah. in Joburg, we lived in Joburg for six months, We'd have to get, we'd have to leave the house at six in the morning to get there for the seven o'clock service set up. And yeah. so we'd get the kids up at half five, we'd get them in the car, we'd drive yeah. over there. I'd have bags of Cheerios, I'd have, you know, um, blankets for them, make sure yeah. you've got the drinks for them, ready for them. You know, you just have to get everything set up. But actually, yeah. all, all that's been invested in them in those moments will have lasting fruit, I'm sure of it. Yeah, um, oh, most definitely. Most so, definitely. Yeah.
Yeah, you've got to get them included. And I'm wondering whether, you know, these this whole stigma, as you mentioned, you know, with, you know, um, preacher, pastor, minister's kids and all of that, perhaps it's because the kids have been left somewhere else and the ministry has, you know, but if you include them in, then you can't now say, I don't spend enough time with them because they're physically with you yeah. on the mission field yeah. and the grace that's flowing through you will flow through yeah. them as well. Isn't that, you know, from what you've said, I can only sum up that's what it is, that you've brought them with along with you and they've literally been trained in the way they should go. They've yeah. experienced the training, isn't it? Like Jesus, I mean, look, you know, when Jesus went on the boats um, with his disciples and all these miracles that he performed, he performed it and he taught them at the same time, didn't he? Yeah. So the yeah. teaching was also coupled with the experience. Yeah, that's so true. So they went on the journey with him and during the journey, he was teaching them, but then he was healing and he was demonstrating and all of that was this whole experience. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, every every child is different. I've definitely got adaptable children, ones that don't want to, you know, fit in the mold. <laughs> and so you have to ask God, OK, how do we adapt? How do we work around this personality and this character? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately, Maria, my children are my ministry above everything else. So yeah. I, I, I if I laid it out to them and said, if you need me to stop, I would, because mm -hmm. they if you know, I can see thousands say, but if my children turn away, that would be the biggest heartbreak for me. And again, mm. that's not always down to me. You know, if you, it might be that you've walked the best life you've ever walked and you've done all the things that you thought were right and your child has walked away at the moment. And, mm. Mm. you know, and that's really difficult. And that's not always down to you. That's yeah. just down to that's life really and trusting God again with your children. Yeah. So I honestly, I cannot boast in myself. I've put the measures that I know into play mm -hmm. and I pray that my children will come through. And I, but they, they to me are the biggest deal. Yeah. Um, but I also want to show them that they're part of a bigger story. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's good for them to know that, that life is about them, but it's not about them. We're part of a bigger story. We're part of a bigger family. We're part of a bigger purpose. And so depositing some of those things into them is really important. But I just want to say, yeah, I just want to pray right now, God, if if there are children that have got lost at the moment, there are children that are walking a different path to you. Lord, I want to pray that you will bring them home. God, we surrender to you. We we bring our pain and our hurt and our um, just our distress in seeing them look um you know look towards other things to be their gods and yet we need them to come home to you god i thank you that you know their name i thank you for the things that you've deposited in them i thank you that you tell us that your word does not return void and so i want to pray for a return of those children back to her home back to jesus i ask this in the mighty name lord i believe that you are calling people home and i want to pray for faith for parents i pray for grace for parents i pray for peace i pray for wisdom on how to communicate Communicate, and uh, I pray for strength to uh, persevere, to stand strong, to stand and remain loving, even when it's difficult, to have patience when it's difficult, and to keep trusting and keep holding on. God, we cry out to you for all those kids that have got distracted, who've lost their way, who, who think that the grass is greener on the other side. Lord, we pray, bring them home in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. We needed that prayer at that moment. And I've been, this has been something that's been on my heart for the last few days. So for you to be able to pray about that now is divine. Thank you. I'm going to ruin my makeup, Maria. I'm oh. going to ruin my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real on this channel. Okay. So I think this is the perfect time to get to the next song. It's called Bring It All to Jesus by Lou Fellingham. Yeah. Sit back and listen and enjoy.
time to break these chains. I bring it all back to Jesus. I bring it all, bring it all back to Jesus. Your word. Oh, what a wonderful song. Bring it back to Jesus. You know, that song has been on replay in my car for the last few days. I know the words. <laughs> <laughs> I could sing, sing that. Sing it, girl. Song. Sing it. I, I, might, I might need to get permission so I can cover Excellent. that one because, yeah. I, that, that's... <laughs> do it. Do it. I'd love that. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Absolutely beautiful song. How do you, um, I want to talk about your inspiration. I want to talk about how you write music, how you come around um, to get the inspiration and, and find the right words. But before that, there's, there's something that's really on my spirit. I know you mentioned community mm. when you when were exp expressing um, the support with your children. And I just feel we should talk about that, the need to have community because I think a lot of um you know we have to understand the difference between musicians in the world and musicians in the church that at the end of the day we are ministers mm -hmm. and ministry um requires fellowship the, mm -hmm. the the horizontal sort of ministry where we're worshiping yeah God but also how do we create that love among the people around us our neighborhood um in order to do, the, to the, the, for the other to flourish at the same time. You know, it says, uh, wise words have been, um, I've read that says, um, you know, go alone if you want to go far, you know, but if you want to yeah. go the longer journey, yeah, you know people. 
Yeah, and yeah. this is the people. Yeah, so tell us a bit about that, how you feel about that and what you're seeing now with the younger generation that's coming up. Yeah, I think, um, well, I'm a people person anyway. So community is um, on one level easy for me because mm -hmm. I thrive. I, I've got a big family. I'm one of five girls. Yeah. Um, and we've always had a home that was full of people. People could come and fall asleep on the sofa if they wanted to. You know, we, we created a space. My mum and dad created a space where the home was full, plates were full. Even if we didn't have a lot of money at the time, there was lots of baked beans on toast being served up. So um, I think, you know, I've, I grew up in community and yeah. as an extrovert, that also helps me. Um, but I think, you know, when you, when you realise that, the part of the uh, becoming a Christian is about joining into a family. You know, you're not supposed to just be I as an individual. So it's, sometimes we talk about you as an individual getting saved, but then you're drawn. You know, you're drawn into a community. You belong then part of a family. Yeah. And so I think um, the challenge for us, even in this season where there's a lot of disconnection, we can't actually meet with people. Some people are not even allowed at their homes yeah. how do we still keep community flourishing because we are designed to be in relationship we're designed to be yeah. uh in family together and that and i just want to say as well sometimes you know obviously i'm an extrovert so i i will have a role to play in that but if you're an introvert or you're not a creative or you're a practical person mm -hmm. then you have a role to play in community too so in a sense that the thing that made um that community work for us was that we everybody brought their gifting to the table. So yeah. people who love to care for children could yeah. care for children. People yeah. who wanted to be in the background and not be seen could yeah. bring their gift to the table. And that was okay. So we all had a different part to play. And yeah. when you become part of a family, um, you know, you you have something to bring to that family. You have yeah. a part to play. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, the, the challenge at the moment is to remain connected and also to be accountable. Yeah. So um, we can connect into all sorts of communities online, watch things all that way, but actually, unless there's an accountability behind yeah. the scenes, yeah. um, that's also that can that can prove dangerous. So yeah. I again is finding good friendships yeah. um, that you can you can share your heart with. You know that they love you. I've got key friends. I could tell mm -hmm. them anything. And yeah. it, like really horrible things that I might be thinking, all my junk out there. Mm. And but they know me and they love me and they'll either speak firmly to me mm -hmm. or or they'll see through the emotion or the junk that I'm expressing and and help me to process to come through the other side. And so you need to be in relationship with that. And yeah. I think things like the song Bring It All to Jesus, you know, um I, I've realized how many people keep things hidden. They keep yeah. their feelings hidden. They keep their marriage breakdown hidden. They keep yeah. uh, their mental health hidden because they, they're they scared that if, it, if it's out in the open, people will feel like they're failing. They're not good enough Christians. They haven't met the mark. They, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. And all of that actually, although some people might respond that way, that is a lie before God. Actually, yes. you are supposed to bring everything into the light so that the darkness doesn't have a hold anymore. That's and part cool. of that is about being in a community, of being part of yes. a community where you feel safe enough to mm. be able to say, you know what, me and my partner right now, we're just, we're, we're really struggling. We're dry. We don't know how to make it through. Will you pray? Will you help us? You have to raise your hand early. Yeah. But you can't do that if you've shut off. You can't do that if you feel vulnerable and you're going to be under attack the moment you show yeah. your vulnerability. But yeah. the gospel is about bringing things into the light so that mm -hmm. the, the darkness no longer has a hold over it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I just, um, I'm taking a slight tangent, but it is about, it, it's about um, being part of a community where you, sometimes you give and sometimes you receive. Yeah. So you know, in, in a community where there are times where you can be the one to raise your hand and other times you have to be the one to be willing to listen to the person who raises their hand. Yeah. Um, and I think as a musician, I would say whether you're in the world or whether you're in the church in terms of how you minister, because I think that as a musician, you know, as a Christian musician in the world, you're still ministering. You're just, mm. you're just looking, it just looks different than it would within the local church context. So you need community there. In fact, it's really hard within that 
that culture, you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of thrown into the world in a, in a way that other people aren't exposed mm -hmm. to all sorts of things. Community mm -hmm. there is really, really important. You need to have Christians who've got your back. You need to be able to process. You need to have someone to turn to when you're confronted with something, you've got choices to make. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't want to go down that path. I need the alternative path. So yeah. you need somebody to, to come to. So yeah, just... Mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm ranting a little bit. Now. No, no, it's perfect because, of course, when you bring in the music aspect as well, I'm thinking about the fact that you used to be part of that well-known band called Fat Fish and yes. you would have had to have had that sense of community as well yes. because everyone had their own giftings. And then, yeah. of course, learning to work and adjust yourself when you're working yeah. in an environment like that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And oh, I think yeah. I miss that sometimes. I miss yeah. I miss being a team. Um, I mean, Nathan and I, you know, we plod on and we have got friends and community and the guys, just seeing the guys on that video, it's like, oh, I remember the days when we were playing together. Um, <laughs> and I really, I love it so much. Um, and I just, I don't know, it, even if you're an introvert, you're still born to be in community. You might yeah. not be able to sit in the room for quite so long as some others, yeah. Yeah. but um, you're not made to completely shut off. Um, mm. it's important to know that you've been brought into something and there's mm. value in that. And you will, you know, there will be a time when you need friendships, when you need that connection. And so you want to invest all the way so that it's not cold or awkward or difficult, but you've already got this foundation of trust. Yeah. You've got this foundation of caring. And mm. I think in terms of a music community, you know, we've got to cheer each other on. It's really mm. easy yeah. to um, promote yourself and feel that vulnerability. Well, if I push them, then that everyone might like them and not like me, you know, mm. or prefer them over me. And that's such an easy temptation. We've all fallen into it. But I think um, it's important within our Christian community um, of musicians to champion one another, to mm. cheer one another on. There's enough room for all of us. Yeah. God loves all our creativity. God has a place for all of us. There yeah. may be some that go further than others, but we've got to trust that God's the one who opens doors. God's the one who raises up. And uh, you've got to do the best with what God has given you. It's not about comparing. It's actually about championing. Yeah. But it's it's difficult. It's difficult. It's so it's hard, hard sometimes. It yeah, is. it is. Yeah, and sometimes I, mean, I have to do practical it. things. Mm. I have to mm. do practical things like just come off Instagram for a minute and not mm. look at what everyone else is doing and get my heart right. Or yeah. I have to actively bless somebody out loud. Okay, mm. Lord, I'm feeling a bit jealous right now. Right, what am I going to do? I'm going to yeah. actively bless them. Yeah, and These choosing natural, ways yeah. to do that. Yeah. Thank you so much for keeping it real. Thank you so much. Because I think sometimes you can hear people say, well, you know, you know, it's it's not just about you, it's about this. About... But it, when you bring it into a practical, you know, sense where people can actually relate to you, we can then receive it better. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's true. Because, you know, you, you it's a balance. Sometimes you can forget the Great Commission and what we're trying to do. And, and it can suddenly be, oh gosh, you know, I'm trying to run the race, I'm trying to do this. And, and that can cause you to be jealous of another yeah. person. Yeah. And then you have to remind yourself again that actually we're in this on the same team. Yeah. We're doing the same thing. Yeah. So actually one plants, another one waters, but God gives the grace. So if I support yeah. the person, what they're doing, I'm part of their ministry too in that sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Yeah. And it is yeah. a wrestle, you know, it's, the wrestle is real sometimes. It, mm. It's because we're human um, yeah. and it's learning how to, um, how to bring yourself out of that place and actually bring yourself through. It's a bit like if you're listening to a lie, you have to learn how to speak the truth over yourself. It's like, yeah. okay, this is the lie. What's the truth? I'm going to speak that out today instead. Yeah. And yeah. we have to do that within our culture. And it's hard because within um, society now, there's a huge demand to have enough numbers on your followers, there's to, to look a certain way, to, to get your song having as many likes and as many listens as possible. Yeah. And so the world is trying to draw you, draw you to that all the time. It tries to distract yeah. you. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And actually, you know, just taking a step back and trying to remember, no, this is about Jesus and yeah. he has a path for me to walk and I've got to keep learning that. And I think the nice thing about lockdown for me is, has been that sense of, oh, I, I might have been trying to get on that treadmill a bit, you know, of comparison mm. and trying to push myself and trying to get people to know, you know, we're still alive, all that sort of thing. And you come off that treadmill for a bit and you go, oh, this is actually quite nice. I'll just, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do next? All right, I'll do that. Okay, wow. what do you want me to do next? 
all right, I'll do that. And trying yeah. to learn to live in that and not rush back in, but actually go, okay, I just want to go piece by piece, step by step. If, yeah. if no, if this doesn't go far and wide and I just minister to this many people for the rest of my life, that will be okay. All right, I've got to, I've got to resolve to this. Um, so I'm learning, you know, yeah. I'm learning, yeah. I'm teaching myself. Um, mm. and, and I think we've just got to keep learning more about who God is. Because mm. ultimately it's when we see God, you know, that scripture in, in Corinthians, isn't it? We, we gaze on him, yeah. on the glory of God, and then we are transformed. And so, mm. you know, yeah. we, the more we're in love with him, the more yeah. we realize who he is. That's the less right. we want ourselves to be seen, you know, yeah. the less we want ourselves to rise up. It's like, oh, no, I want to yeah. give him the glory. I want him to get the, the glory. Yeah. And so, again, you know, it's a process. But the more we learn of who he is, the easier that other bit will become, I think. That's it. Perfectly put. And, you know, that, you know, <laughs> I'm just here smiling away because it's like. It's like you're looking at my question sheets. Ah. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's It's. it's it's as though you are, we're hearing the same, you're going in the direction that I'm already planning to take you. It's like, uh, I, don't have, I don't need to ask any questions. I should just <laughs> sit back and let you speak because you're saying the things that I want to ask next. Uh, one of the things I did want to mention to you just a few, before you said it was lockdown, you know, to say, yeah. actually, there are some things I learned over lockdown. I was going to say, so what did you learn? And then you said it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm still that, learning, I'm still learning. Let's talk about your prophetic ministry because you do have that. Um, I, I've I, I've found out that you you do have a prophetic side to you, and you do tend to you know through the music ministry because actually music uh, a music minister is very linked to prophetic ministry yeah, as well. Yeah. So tell us a bit about that because I can clearly see that from this interview. I've, I've already <laughs> experienced that. Um, <laughs> how does that influence your songwriting? Is that something that has worked in your songwriting to sort of find out from the Lord what what is the word for now, the the Rhema word for now. I mean, how how has tell us about your prophetic ministry, please. Uh, um, I'm just gonna let you just speak because <laughs> well you know what I think I just I don't even know. I think I'm learning. I think yeah. um I'm growing and realizing that often God's speaking and you don't even realize he's speaking. Yeah. Um for me, it's about having eyes and ears. I think a thing I've learned in lockdown is how much I need to be uh, in nature and I, I respond to, um, you know, things around me. Yeah. So it, being stuck in a room, I'm not very good at, you know, I'm not very good at hearing very well at that moment. But yeah. put me out and I look at the sea or I look at, a, look at a hill or I walk past a person and yeah. all of a sudden everything starts flowing. So yeah. I think recognising how you hear God is quite important. You know, what, where are the places that you find God? There are other people that, you know, they want to be in a room, they don't want anything else. Um, and that's how they hear God. So learning that is important. Um, I think for me, trying to make... So within the worship context, you know, we often want to bring the song in the moment. So you've got your songwriting in moments mm -hmm. and then you've got in the moment when you're leading. What's the what's the overflow in this particular moment? Mm -hmm. And um, I encourage people to to learn how to listen to God in there every day so mm -hmm. that the worship leading is not like you suddenly have to change gear. And right now it's time to yeah. listen to God. How do I find him? How do I hear him? How does it work? I'm trying to ask God. Okay, how do I learn that in my everyday living? How do I mm. listen to you, Holy Spirit? How do I follow mm. your promptings? So that mm. the Sunday setting or whenever you have your church setting, that's just another part of learning to hear God. Um, so it kind of diffuses all this kind of mystery in a sense. I mean, it is mysterious that God can speak to us, but you know, sometimes there can be in the kind of level of propheticness we're talking about. Yeah. Um, you can feel pressure. What if I don't yeah. hear right? What if I get the wrong thing happening? Whatever. There's grace. There's always grace. Um, and God loves your faith. Um, there's accountability again. So it's really important to, if you feel like there's something that you're carrying, that it's really important to be able to weigh that with leaders and submit mm. that to your leaders in certain contexts mm. as well. That's really important. Mm. Um, but also just learning to be a prophetic person because actually mm. we all have the ability to hear God. It's mm. not, I don't, I don't kind of get to hear God more because I'm on stage. No, mm. we all, uh, you know, we receive Christ. We, you know, we're filled with the spirit. 
we then are in connection with God. We have his Holy Spirit living inside of us. We want to learn how to hear his voice and recognize him. And everybody can hear God. Um, so, yeah, so those sort of things are on my mind when it comes to that sort of thing. But um, I don't know. I, I wouldn't call myself prophetic. I find it very hard to say that over myself mm. because it's a scary thing to say. But I do I do recognize that that God has spoken to me and given me specific words. I mean, you know, it's 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 God, isn't it? It's like mo moments when you pray for someone yeah. and then they're like, how did you know all that stuff? I'm like, yeah. I didn't really. It was just the prayer that God gave me to pray over you, you know. Yeah. Um, so God's just really kind. He wants yeah. people to know him. You know, yeah. he wants people to hear his voice. Yeah. We, we are so fortunate that we live in a day where yeah. we are in communion with the Holy Spirit, you know, yeah. in in the yeah. old testament we that wasn't in existence in the mm. same way you know there were yeah. moments of deposit moments of revelation mm. moments of communing with god but yeah. you know and king david when he was um anointed as king it then said then the, the spirit came and filled him and was with him yeah. but actually there are lots of contexts where you know it, the holy spirit wasn't present in the way that he is now yeah. with us yeah. yeah and so yeah i think that's incredible um, it is, isn't it, that we actually have the Holy Spirit with us now yeah. every day, all yeah. the time. And, um, and you know, if we could just tap into that, what glory would we be walking in? We'd I know, walking, and I'm still so learning. Much glory. Yeah. So much. I'm still um, learning, honestly. There's yeah. still so much more. Um, and, you know, oh, Lord, just to be able to hear his voice even more. But it's funny, sometimes learning the promptings of the Holy Spirit can be on silly things, like it's not like a major word from God. It might be about what you're going to watch or what you're going to eat or a thought process about your motive. And you think, oh, no, that's not really my motive. I'm I'm fine to say this. And then you realize after you've said it, oh, that was, that was the Holy Spirit talking to me and I didn't mm. listen properly. Mm. You know, mm. silly things about, I don't know, it doesn't have to be anything major sometimes but learning how to listen to the prompting and follow it is yeah. is like a skill set that you have to learn how to do yeah um so there are times when i have to laugh at myself oh that was you lord sorry i didn't realize <laughs> yeah 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 it, you walk with him don't you literally yeah. you have to walk with him and um live life with him um as he's you know as he's planned and prepared us and actually given us that gift isn't it so we don't have to ever walk alone and he never gives us or forsakes us never. that brings reality to that actual scripture that yeah. he literally never leaves us never when the most littlest thoughts yeah that I think it's insignificant yeah that too and I would encourage you if you want to hear from God learn how to listen to the small the small things yeah um, yeah because it's it's it remar it's remarkable sometimes. I'm like, oh darn it, I've done it again. I missed it, Lord. You know, <laughs> oh, you know, I think I'm yeah. making progress in learning how to hear from God. And then, oh yeah. man, I've done it again. Um, and I think you know, God. Once you become a Christian, you can be you know you hear from God. All of us can do it. Yes. And that's part of my thing with the women's conference. And actually what I'm really excited about with doing this stuff online is my yeah. vision is actually to get people into community while we do these coffee mornings. Um, because obviously right now we can't have it, but we have had like some women, there's been nine of them in the afternoon gathering, watching the coffee morning, Bible journaling together. And so for me, the joy in that is actually community is being built. And actually, it's not me then doing all the ministry to everybody. Mm. They're mm. ministering to one another. And so yeah. the joy for me is seeing you released into what God has called you to be. Yeah. And to, to for you to be empowered to know, oh, God speaks to me. Oh, I can yeah. pray for that person today. It doesn't need me to do it. You can do it, you know. Yeah. And so exactly. that's part of what I would love to see out of the coffee mornings and out of the things yeah. we're doing online is that people learn how to be ministers themselves and don't just rely on the person, you know, on the platform. Yes, I can I can help. Yes, I can facilitate. Yes, I can preach a good word. Yes, I can bring this. I can bring that. But also we as a people, as a body, are called to minister to one another. Yeah. So um, I find that exciting. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and that's the great, again, the great commission. You know, we are all ministers of reconciliation, as it says in the Bible, meaning that we are all to reconcile the word back, the, the, the world back to God again and, and teach yeah. 
uh, others as well, how to, it says, go out and make disciples. So mm -hmm. everyone's a minister. Um, yeah. You know, God has called everyone to ministry is what I mean. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad that you came on the show because I feel as though this in itself was, you know, a divine appointment to prepare people's minds for what God is doing yeah. and what God is is about to do their changes. And I believe that those changes and that move of God is going to take us to a deeper place and the higher dimension. And, 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 you know, yeah, I believe that you were meant to be here today and everything you've said, you know, people out there, listen to what she has said, watch it and rewatch it and rewatch it. And then pray to the Holy spirit that he will en enlighten your mind to see the deep things in these words, you know, there's depths and levels. Okay, let's listen to another song. There's a beautiful song that um, that you wrote, that you wrote um, called This Changes Everything. Listen to it, listen to the words and just let it soak into your spirit, enjoy.
Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful song, Lou. Really beautiful. And I know that's from one of your earlier albums. And you've got an album now at the moment that's out called Made For You, most, your most recent album, yes. isn't it? That was yes. last year, live album. Yes, I'm kind of, yes, last yeah. year. Losing yeah. Track. Now, you know, the, the first two um, videos that we played was Lou Fellingham's songs from her recent album called Made For You, which is live. But of course, Lou, I, I have noticed in that, that uh, video we just watched, you, you, that song was being done with Nathan, your husband. Yes. It's, I think it's great now that you're now working with your husband in, 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 you know, it's nice. It's so, it's really sweet. And you do worship mornings and coffee mornings. Tell us a bit about yeah. that. And tell people out there how they can connect with you for your yeah. worship mornings and your coffee mornings. With yeah, the, so you know. basically, um, obviously in this season where you can't get out and be worshiping with the church and a in a setting in a building whatever um nathan and i have been doing these things called worship wednesdays um come and sing and so on a wednesday morning 8 30 to 9 a.m uh you can join us live on facebook or on youtube which is lou fellingham music.com or um my facebook is lou fellingham and uh youtube is lou fellingham music and we do live uh, half an hour worship. You can catch up on that. If you can't make that moment, we leave it up running. Everyone can catch up on it. And then once a month, I'm doing these coffee mornings where we're doing um, praise and worship. Then um, I'm interviewing different people. So I think you saw one with a girl called Claire. I've got a, somebody who's swimming the channel um, next year. I'm interviewing her soon. And um, I've got a few things in store. And then I preach a word that I feel God's given me for the moment. And uh, so I'm excited about that. Yeah. And then we're doing a few gigs as well online. And who else knows what God will tell us to do next? We shall see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the one with Claire was was amazing. I loved it. And and all the others that I dipped in and out to um of, yeah. I thought was really, really good. Yeah. And of course, um, we have got some shout outs. There's some people who have sent you. I I can't Aww. see any of the other channels. I'm only looking at YouTube, <laughs> but just so I can say hello to some of the people here. Ocean Sea says hi. Hi. Aisha Keister, who's um, connecting from London, she says hello. Hi. And um, Rachel Chamberland, is that your ah. name? Rachel? Ah, cool. Hi, Rachel. Yeah, ah, she cool. says, loves you so much and loves your songs. Oh, that's oh. so lovely. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's nice to nice to kind of see you, know you're there. That's always good. So, yeah, it's so lovely to have you on the show today. I've really enjoyed it. You see, you're that you're, you're that person that I need to have on the show more often. Like every oh, once in a while, I need you to come back again. Will you come back again? I would you? love to. I would love Thank to. You. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much. And yeah, you know, so yeah, um, at the moment, I know that you're you're working on some projects. Can you just quickly tell us yeah. that before we go? Yeah, I so really I've good. got a, a tune with Ibe, the giant killer out. Uh, well, actually, it's coming out soon called Fix My Eyes. And uh, he's got a guest artist on there called Renzo, which is exciting. Yeah. I've recently done a collab with a girl called Sarah Tabo. And so oh, she's yeah. bringing that out next year. Um, yeah. I'm going to be on Fox Collective on TBN. Uh, with Noel Robinson soon yeah. doing something with him. So, yeah, it's it's busy. Um, yeah. And then I've got a coffee morning coming up. So, yeah, lots of yeah. and some songwriting. So I'm looking yeah. forward to what God has in store. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for being on the show. And we'll Thank see you, you again soon. Thank God you. Bless. Nice to see you. Bye. 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 <laughs> And so that was Lou Fellingham. We have had an amazing morning with her. And, you know, she's given us so much nuggets, a wealth of information here, just for us to understand who we are as Christians, you know, knowing that this and all that has been given to us changes absolutely everything. The fact that Jesus is alive changes everything. The fact that we are walking with the Holy Spirit and he's guiding us and he's there waiting wherever you are right now. He's with you. You can talk to him. You can communicate yeah. with him. And in doing that, all things are unlocked. All the promises, all that God says you are, will become revealed. And you can then walk in that glory from glory to glory to glory to glory. So I'm Maria Bond. And I pray that you continue to walk in an atmosphere of glory from day to day. See you next uh, week, the same time and the same place. God bless you.
standing in the middle of a grass field in the British countryside is the perfect setting to introduce this new and exciting brand launched by the Giving Stream Limited called Your Farmer. Direct from British Farms, your farmer have a variety of products available. Whether it's a butchery product, diced meats, mince meat, sausages or burgers, or if you're looking for oven ready products that's been slow cooked by a team of qualified chefs, a variety of potato dishes or vegetable dishes in both a single portion or a family range, your farmer has everything you're looking for. British agriculture is so important and that's why every ingredient your farmer use is sourced from British producers grown on farms just like this in the UK. Seven days a week, 365 days a year, our farmers work hard to produce an excellent tasting product using high welfare farming methods, a free range grass fed beef and lamb as an example produces a high quality product. Your farmer are proud of where they source the ingredients from, so much so that they've bespoke built a footprint system so you, the consumer, can trace every ingredient within the meal right back to the British producer. One simple scan using the Your Farmer app or by simply opening the camera on your phone, scan the packaging and this allows you to trace every ingredient within the meals or within the butchery products straight back to the British producer so you know where your food has come from. The Your Farmer brand has a conscience. As well as supporting British agriculture, the brand has pledged its support to help support people that are living in food crisis here in the UK. Every time a butchery product is sold, a packet of sausages as an example, or every time a farm finest meal is sold, a free meal is then donated to help feed somebody in food crisis. Now the brand benchmarks its prices against major retailers, so you the consumer are not paying for this. This is all done through the profits of the brand, but without your custom, we are unable to offer this support. So if you're an individual consumer looking to do a family shop or you're a buyer of a commercial or government department, buy your farmer. As well as putting great tasting products on the table, you're supporting British agriculture, which is so important, and you're also helping to feed families in food crisis, which is equally important. So go to the store, check it out, download the app for free. This is a nationwide service and you will not be disappointed. Thank you very much for watching this video.